Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll be back. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But the but the Lord has declared that we're gonna have to um, share. Praise, praise you, Jesus. <laughs> We're going to have to share. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. He has declared that. Amen. And it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. God know how to share. Amen. And we want to put together something. Uh, some of the ministries have, you know, some of the ministries have been suffering some Lack of visitations, like Mississippi. Praise you, Jesus. We want to, we want to, we want to try to help Mississippi get up and running. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Mississippi has hung in there. Glory to God, and and, and we 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 have a commitment to Mississippi. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, we we own that building out there as well. Praise the Lord. And, and Pastor Shirley has, she has just, I mean, she's a trooper. She has hung in there. Praise you, Jesus. She has hung in there. Amen. And so we, we I want to say to Pastor Shirley, help is on the way. Help is on the way. Praise you, Jesus. That's the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about God. Amen. You know, when God put something on my heart, uh, Mississippi, Trinidad, amen, and Canada, amen. We haven't been there in a while. I've sent some bishops up there, but it's, I think it's time for me to show up. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Bless the Lord. But, glory to God, we have so, we have so many works that God has, has blessed. He has blessed us to, to be able to to minister internationally, to minister internationally, and but one of the things I said to you years ago is that God was not raising up a one-man show. All of you are being trained to minister, and I, I want you to see something, amen, I want you to take note of something. Um, these young men, and I use them as an example, these young men, uh, Pastor... Daniel Chen and um, Evangelist Yannick and Evangelist Anesta and Pastor Kareem. These young men are from Jamaica, uh, but they travel with me. Amen. They, they're, they're, they're a team that God put together, uh, not only to travel with me, but to go places and run meetings. Amen. To Take this word. I could take right now. I could. I have a conference I have to do in Soberton, Georgia, next weekend. And if I was not able to to do that conference, I could send uh, Pastor. I could send Pastor Kareem and Anesta and Daniel and all of them to go up there and do that conference. Just like I could send Bishop McGirt and a team with him. Amen. I could send Bishop McGirt anywhere. Amen. Anywhere. And he gonna, he's going to go holy and he's going to come back holy. Come on, somebody. Amen. He's he going holy and he's coming back holy. Bless the Lord. And, and, you know, I'm raising these young men up. To be able to do the same thing. Amen. And, and, and I thank God for some prototypes around here. Because we got some prototypes that these young people can pattern themselves after. Amen. So we're, we're raising them up to be able to go out to, without Dr. Banks. I, w- I want you guys to be able to go out. I w- Amen. And I want to see, see hundreds of us on the field. That's my goal. Over the next few months, I'm trying to raise up. People, I'm, I'm asking God to identify those who are willing to to take this word everywhere. I also want to commend uh, 
You know, we there's if you have to catch hold of this vision. Bible teaches is a vision. It's a vision given to us by God. And the vision is to spread this gospel all over the world, take it everywhere, and to engage pastors. Um, um, you see, when God uh, visits you, and he give you a word that you can't hear anybody else preaching. It puts you in a a box over here, you know. And even your own people will start to wonder sometime. Why is no one else preaching this? And they'll begin to wonder whether it's of God or, or whatever. But you just have to keep preaching. And when you, when you continue to preach, as you continue to preach, you, you, you witness some people embracing it. You witness some people kind of just watching you. And you witness some people leave. But you keep preaching. You have to keep preaching what God told you to preach. And sometimes you feel so very alone. You feel like you're you're out there in this big old world by yourself. You know, because it's hard to find someone that agrees with God and is hearing from God what you're hearing. And so it gets it gets to be a lonely road sometimes, and 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 you you do a lot of crying and a lot of praying, and um, but I was in I was in a fast track not long ago, a few weeks back, and Bishop Bias was there, Apostle Bias. And he said something that just filled my heart. Because God always knows what you need when you need it. And I don't think he realized, I haven't even told him this. He don't realize the effect of what he said had on me. Uh, Because Bishop Bias was a part of this ministry years ago. Years ago. And uh, for whatever reasons, you know, he went his way and began, you know, the Lord took him uh, into starting churches and raising up a ministry. And um, but we've always maintained our friendship. We never there was never any bitterness between us. Never. And, you know, some people leave and they're bitter. Some people leave and all of a sudden now BT becomes a cult and and I become a witch and all of that stuff. I never had that from Bishop Bias. Amen. Uh, But he got up and he said, he said, he said, I just didn't know. He said, back then, I just did not know. I didn't understand. And he said, but now I know. And we're going to prove this message. Amen. Amen. We're going to prove that you can be in another church. You don't have to be BT. Amen. All we need is the same word. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. All we need is the same word. Preaching the same thing. Believing in the same thing. Saying the same thing. So that men will see our good works and glorify our Father. Come on somebody. Glory to God. 
And when he said that, I said, now that's it. That's, that's apostolic order. And that's what an apostle does. That's supposed to be the fruit of an apostle. Amen. You have to stand firm. You have to stand fast. You don't, you wouldn't believe the criticism I've had from, from my own people. You know, why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? Because God said no. He said, no, we can't do that. We can't mix the manner. We can't, we can't do the anniversary thing with inviting all these different people in with a different message and all of that. We can't go running. I'm not running around taking y'all from church to church, swapping money and, and all of that stuff. I, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm just not going to do it because God said, don't do it. Amen. He said, don't mix the manner. I'm holding you responsible for what you feed the sheep. You feed them what I give you to feed them. Hallelujah. And and if and if and I it's saying it's certain things I just could not do and can't do, couldn't do it then, can't do it now, and will not do it. Amen. But when when I entertain people like Bishop Bias and you know that 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 will testify, glory to God, of how God brought him full circle. Brought him full circle, and and he's he is grabbing hold of this world word, and his um, son-in-law is a real prophet. Where is he? Glory to God, he's here somewhere. I saw him last night, but he's a prophet, and that's a blessing because he can confirm the word. He can confirm this word, and he does confirm this word. Praise the Lord, and and I see God, I see God now. Unifying. Don't you despise small beginnings. Because this is just the beginning. Amen. This is just the beginning. Other pastors. Other pastors. I went into a, a, a Methodist church. Man, and, and, and in that Methodist church, you know, you don't, you don't supposed to say amen too loud. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. They were doing, they were doing a conference. And they asked me if I would do the whole conference. Praise the Lord. I thought I was just going to be a one-night speaker. But they wanted me to do the whole conference. And we did the, whole, the entire conference. And I'm telling you, those people, my God, they received the word better than some of us did. Praise you, Jesus. I mean, received the word. And you could see them moving. And then the pastor said to me, she said, glory to God, she said, we, we, we need to work together. We, we need to fellowship together, Dr. Banks. We need some more of this teaching. We need this teaching in our church. God is a good God, saints. God, God is a good God. Amen. And I, I thank God. I, I thank God. And over in, in Freeport, we got a working bishop over there. He is working to bring... I mean, he's bringing leaders together. Last time I was in Freeport, glory to God, I was in a room full of pastors. He brought all these pastors. They lined up, glory to God, to hear this word. And, and saints, y'all know me, glory to God. When God put an anointing on me, it's just all over. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. And it, it seemed that, that that particular night, God had a, an anointing on me, and I was preaching. And I said to these preachers, I said, I said, hold it a minute, hold it. Just hold up here. All these bishops and, you know, and whatnot. I said, just hold it one minute. How many of y'all don't even believe in a woman preacher? I said, how many of y'all don't even believe God called a woman to preach or pastor? They went. <laughs> I, said, I said, so let's clear that up. Amen. So y'all can start listening. Because y'all ain't, y'all's checking me out. Come on. Let, let's clear that up. Took them into the word. Took them into the word about five minutes. And I said, nah, who got a problem? One of them said, I had one, but I ain't got none now. <laughs> and they were, and after that, we were able to preach. Because, amen, if the word destroy your little belief system, you better leave it alone. It's best to go on, go on, on. Amen. The word, you know, and I love that. I love that when, when people will accept God's word as authority. And, and, and see, when you get a bunch of preachers in the house and you're trying to clear up a doctrine, you get a bunch of preachers that supposedly already know the Bible. Hello. 
And you take them to the scriptures that they, that cannot be refuted. Hallelujah. What you going to do there? You either got to embrace it or you got to be in defiance and rebellion to God. Isn't that right? And we were able to preach and minister glory to God. And and uh, and these guys were they, they were a blessing to me as well. They, you know, and they they too expressed the desire. And I, I just want to shout out to Bishop Marvin, whom I know is online, always online. Praise the Lord. <laughs> glory to God. Amen. Doing an awesome job, awesome job of fellowshipping, amen, and bringing this, bringing this truth to other leaders. Glory to God. And I just, I just love all of you saints. I, I love you so much. I, I really do. You know, I love you so much. Hello. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I love y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Bless the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, saints, I'm, I'm, I tell you, I'm one of the most blessed women in the world. Look at all my children. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. I, I tell you, we're we just going to do a thing in the Lord. We, Amen. We honor Amen. Pastor Best being with us all the way from North Carolina. Come down here and, and stole one of my babies. Glory to God. Uh, hallelujah. I, I, amen. I, I, amen. I, yeah, I said stole. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Had to be a stealing because I wasn't even invited to the wedding. I just thought I would say that. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, it's kind of strange when somebody been in, in your church for almost 30 years and they get married and you ain't even invited. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Glory. <laughs> so, I, no, you don't. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> I just figured they had some decisions to make, glory to God, and I got the short end of the stick. <laughs> but I understand. I just want you to know I understand. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus, because I grab a hold of the message. There's nothing in my heart. It's clear. Glory to God. It's pure before the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we are so glad for them. We're so glad. Let's give God a praise for our, amen, pastors, best and best, amen. Because I, I, I want Helen to be happy. She deserves to be happy. Amen. She deserves to be happy. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. And, and I, I've, I've, I've known Pastor Best for years. And I believe he can make her happy. I believe he can make her happy. Praise the Lord. And I, all I know is he better. Praise you. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I, I am I'm excited about y'all. I'm really excited about y'all. And we don't we love them saints. We love them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are we ready for the word now? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus. What's going on? Must be something going on here. Okay. Uh, somebody want to sing? Praise you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I, 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 I got a, a moment. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Huh? It just keep going. This, oh, this one right here. Glory to God. Try, trying to do his thing. Saints, God is a good God. He's a good God. Amen. Stay in place. Place this straight up. Praise Jesus. Amen. God, God is a good God. And um, I want us to, to really embrace what God is saying in this conference. Amen. I really, I really want us to embrace it. Praise the Lord. Amen. And um, while I'm doing a wardrobe change or whatever I'm supposed to do back there, they're calling me. Praise the Lord. Can I get another song out of you guys? Every praise. 
See, I didn't see my musicians over there. That's why, you know, I could have sung it for you, you know, praise God. <laughs> but I still, I, I still don't see any musicians over there, glory to God. But that's just my favorite song. I just, I just that's, 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 that's my favorite song. Every praise belongs to God. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Do we have a keyboardist? No, not today. Not to? Oh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, we do. Where's, where's, you play the keyboard. What you doing sitting there? You play the keyboard too? Get on over here and play okay, that keyboard. Okay. Woo! Yeah, amen. Let me go say. Woo! You coming in here trying to marry somebody too? Praise you. <laughs> you better earn your keep, brother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. And you better play it good too. <laughs> I changed my mind. <laughs> All these brothers sneaking down here marrying my folk. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Somebody turn that keyboard on for us. Come on around here, Yanny, and get this, this this power working. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. I'm here. I, I, oh, they got to turn you some some power on. Praise you, Jesus. It's on, huh? It's loading up. Amen. You too. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> God. God is so good. Ain't God good, say? Yeah, I tell you, but God want us happy. Yes, God. He want us happy. He want He want love to flow from us to one another all the time. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. He just want that love to flow. Amen. I don't know. Byron might have put a lock on it. I tell you. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. He might have put a put a lock on it. Amen. He not here. Maybe that was a sign. I don't want nobody else using his equipment. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. But I mean, you know, these these girls are so good. They, 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 they so good. They don't even need, you know. They 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 once they get started, he'll catch up with y'all. Praise the Lord. New anointing. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every prayer, every prayer is to our God.
Yeah. Hey. 
Nobody's greater. Nobody's greater. Yeah, God. Nobody's greater than you, oh God. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. I still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody's greater. Nobody greater than you. Can you lift your voices and say, Nobody's greater? Nobody's greater. Nobody's greater. Nobody's greater than you. There is no one greater. No.
Thank you for your love, oh God. Nobody, nobody greater than you. Nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him worship. Come on, let your hands move like a thimble. Let your voices resound like a trumpet. If he's the greatest love, you know. Hallelujah. It's all right if we take a few minutes to worship God. Nothing happens by accident. There's nobody greater. We just want to say thank you, God. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for starting me on my way. Thank you that you allowed me to come to this conference 2015. As I said earlier, some of us, the devil thought he had us. But God, who is rich in mercy, great in love, he said, not so. They will be mine, and I will be theirs, and we will be one. Isn't that the message this conference? That God wants us to be one. Not just in word, but in deed, in heart, in spirit, in soul. God wants us to be one. One with him. One in faith. One in love. One with his mindset, his attitude, his heart toward people. Every day I wake up, I say, if I could just keep this one commandment, to love the world as God loved the world, I believe I can make it in. Because that means that I'm putting myself on the back burner. Every day ain't easy, but I keep that before me. God, I want to love the way you love. I want to forgive the way you forgive. I want to press the way you press, even to the cross. Come on, if that's your testimony, give the Lord away. together in worship. Come on, magnify his name. Come on, give him glory. Give him a praise and praise. Give him a but God praise. Give him a yeah, will I praise you praise. Give him a I've been good. You've been good to me, God praise. Give me, you brought me a mighty long way praise. You healed my body praise. You did what I thought you couldn't do, praise. Hallelujah. Glory. All right, you may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. He's an awesome God. Bless the Lord. That's, that's, that's. Those are some of my favorite songs because they talk about Jesus and, and how great he is and our God, how great he is. And he deserves all the praises. Amen. Praise the Lord. We honor our apostle coming in. Praise you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Amen. Saints, we're going a little bit further. We're going to see what it is God want to say. I hope you read some of this study guide last night. After, after leaving Bunny's kitchen, I tell you, was not that some good food last night? Whoa. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. 
I left, I felt like I was full up to my neck. Praise you, Jesus. God is good. I think I'm just going to do a salad next time. Praise you, Jesus. Saints, I want to go back to chapter 2. I want to finish it because this is the heart. This is the heartbeat of the conference. Chapter 2 is the heart of the conference. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, you have a mic over there, Pastor. Amen. One of you guys, one of you pastors over there, read for me. Um, we talked about we talked about what is the Christian faith. And I don't want to lose the perspective here. I don't want I don't want you to lose the perspective of what we're talking about. We're trying to identify what what is our faith? What is what, exactly what is the Christian faith? That, that's that's what we want to identify because if you understand the Christian faith and, and saints, I have begun to understand more about my salvation now than I ever did, and in doing so, I have also understood that many, many, many people that declared themselves to be saints, people that we thought were saved and sanctified, and they probably were, glory to God, but many of them didn't make it in. That's just, that's just the truth. Because if you judge by these standards, the word of God, if you judge by the word of God, you too will see that they did not make it in. Some of them did not make it in. There were church mothers that we rallied at their funerals, glory to God, and because they had been saved for a hundred years, and glory to God, and they were the mother of the church, amen, and we had a home going for them. But when we stop and think about it, they were meaner than rattlesnakes. Some of them were mean and hateful and, amen, gossipers and some of everything, glory to God. And good old deacon that had been serving for a long time, glory to God. And when we think about it, he wasn't really holy. Amen. Glory to God. And God, God uh, Jesus told us that when I come, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And the world, he doesn't have to come for the whole world to come for you. When he come to get you, when your number is up, glory to God, amen, you need to be holy. And, and having the Holy Ghost inside of you, glory to God, doesn't mean that you're holy. Because if you don't walk in the spirit, you can live in it all day, but if you don't walk in it, God say you, you you know he treats you as a bastard and you, you know he said a disobedient child he treats as a bastard and and a bastard means that God doesn't lay claim to you so when the, when this life is over God said no you were a bastard you wouldn't obey me you wouldn't receive chastisement praise you Jesus you wouldn't receive chastisement glory to God and uh glory to God some some people not making it in, didn't make it in, because they couldn't keep a pure heart. Their heart wasn't pure. It just just heart was not pure. Uh, they just couldn't love the way Jesus loved. And see, see, that's not a hard thing for me. I just let God love through me. I, I just let God love through me. Some people are not going to make it in because they don't agree with God. They don't, they don't agree with him. You know, God's way is just not enough. You know, we, 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 we want to add something to it. You know, praise you, Jesus. Amen. I thank God for being God. Amen. I, I, I'm glad he God. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm glad God is God. And, I'm, and, and I pray all the time, Lord, whatever, if I mess up, don't turn me over to my enemy. You deal with me. You, you know, you deal with me. Whoop me. Beat me. Strip me. Bring me to an open shame. Whatever you got to do. But don't turn me over to the minds of even your own people. C come on, somebody. D don't turn me over to the minds of your own people. Glory to God. Because, see... Amen. I, I, saints, I, I, you know why I can stand here? Because, see, I done been on both sides. 
I've served God and I've messed up. And when I messed up, I got up. And I got up with the help of God. I think you might know what I'm talking about, preacher. Glory to God. And see, when, when you know, this is my friend here. When he, when he had his, his, his experience and, and, and he, 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 he went before God and asked God to forgive him. And hallelujah. Glory to God. God forgave him. He went before his people and asked the people to forgive him. Like everybody in the world to forgive him. And that still wasn't enough for some folk. The people in his own church. It wasn't the people in the world. It was the people in his own church that didn't feel that God's forgiveness was enough. You see, it's a different thing when a person doesn't repent. That's a different thing. So I'm, tr- I'm trying to free somebody in here. I'm trying to free you now. I want you free. Completely free. It's a different thing when folks don't repent. See, because when a person, when a person uh, keeps lying about what they do, that's not repentance. I say when a person lies about what they do, that they haven't repented. Y'all better hear me. You know why I'm going there? Because I hear the devil saying, but what about this? And what about that? And what about them? And what about those? When people lie about what they do, that's not repentance. That's arrogance. Are y'all hearing God? There's no deliverance in that. God don't deal with that. But when I saw this pastor... Glory to God, say, I'm, I was just wrong. I, 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 I dishonored God. I dishonored my church. I just dishonored even my daddy's own name. I dishonored everybody, everything. Forgive me, please forgive me. And when I see his own people, that's not enough. Some kind of way we need to penalize you more. It don't matter that God that God done brought him to an open shame and the world and stripped him, glory to God. Hallelujah. Done stripped him of everything. Is this all right, Pastor? Glory to God. Because somebody need to learn from that. Glory to God. The world done stripped him of everything. Glory to God. That wasn't enough. God done brought him to an open shame all over TV everywhere. That still ain't enough. All his friends in ministry, all his, all the pastors that he know, everybody know about him. That still ain't enough. Still wasn't enough. Hallelujah. And it wasn't enough for his own people. That's why I say you can be lost in the house. Come on, somebody. You can be lost in the house. You can sit right in the house and be lost. Come on, somebody. And let me tell you, can I just I just need to tell you things. Y'all need to learn some things. You know the people that will not forgive a person that repents will embrace those that don't. Now, I'm just telling you what God said. We'll, we'll be a friend to those who lie and be dishonest about what they did and how they did it. We'll, we'll, we'll conrad with them and we'll fellowship with them and we'll embrace them. And, and we'll, because you know why you do it? Because birds of a feather stick together. Oh, I'm just telling you what the Holy Ghost is saying. We'll embrace them and say, well, you know, God wants us to love and, and God will, we'll embrace the people God has rejected. Hallelujah. And we'll reject the ones God has forgiven. Now, I'm telling you what God's saying. I'm telling you what God's saying because I want you free in here. I want you to be able to hear. When I preach, I don't want nothing in your heart. I don't want nothing in your heart. Hallelujah. Because one thing about BTBT BT is transparent. I don't care what the devil says. If I sin, I stand before you and tell you. 
Hallelujah. Come on now. Hello. Every time I made a mistake, I come up here and tell you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You better examine yourselves. You better examine yourself. I'm telling you what God say. God is God is not pleased with people that hear the word all the time and do the opposite of what it says. We become the scripture tell us don't become partakers of another man's sin. Listen to me. The scripture said don't become partakers of another man's sin. There are people that sin against God and they never come clean about it. And they just think to continue. Just go on. Just go on. Glory to God. Same people just change spots, go someplace else and go on and never come clean, never admit what they do, never reconcile themselves back to God or man. And those are the people we seek out and we embrace. And we've got to show them so much love. I show my love by praying for you. I show my love by telling you you need to repent. I show my love by saying God not pleased with you. You need to repent. Hallelujah. And when you won't repent, after a while, God says. And I have wept in cases like that for people that I loved. Wept and grieved. And God said to me, he said, why are you grieving over that which I have rejected? Because it first rejected me. It will not do what my word said. Let me tell y'all something. It's a dangerous thing to, to fly all the way to these conferences and sit here and listen to God and listen to God and listen to God. And then God bring a trial and, it, and you do the opposite of what you've been trained to do. Come on somebody. That's, that's a dangerous thing. And you know what? Let me tell you something. You know when I know I'm in a bad Situation, you know when you know you know when I know that I'm in trouble, it's when my heart, out of my heart, does not flow love freely. That's when I know I'm in trouble. When when I when when I can I can't even rejoice like I used to. I can't praise like I used to. I can't say hallelujah like I used to because judgment got me way down. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Johnny Mae Pryor got the, she got the memory of an elephant. She said, Doc, you said a long time ago that the, a season of testing in the leader's life Reveal the seeds of disloyalty in the people. I forgot that. It reveals that seed of disloyalty and not just to the ministry, to God. We got to be loyal to God. Hallelujah. And I, my, thing, my thing is this. See, see we, can, we can be so good, you know. Woo. And skipping through the tulips. And because we've been so good, and because we can sit down and say, I'll never do that, and I'll never do that, and I'll never do that. Honey, God. God got a devil that he can instruct to set up a trial for you that you never thought that you would have to deal with. And when he does, my, my, my counsel is don't need no mercy. Because if you don't give none, you don't get none. You know why I'm free today? I'm going to tell you why I'm free. 
Let me tell you why I am free. I am free because I deal with sin the way the scriptures say deal with it. That's why I'm free. There's nobody, special leadership, that sin that I don't give an opportunity to repent. Now, I'm going to do that. Because God gave me an opportunity. Come on, somebody. God gave me an opportunity to repent. Hallelujah. And you know what? I'm glad that my repentance was enough for him. I'm glad that I could listen to counsel. I'm glad that when there were things about, about my character sometimes, glory to God, that Sister T, Prophetess T, would come and she'd say, Pastor, now God don't like that. You got to change that. I'm glad I could hear that. I'm glad I could hear counsel. I'm glad that when I need it, hallelujah, I needed God <laughs> to give me another chance. He was there. And he gave me another chance. But that came because I truly repented. My heart, my heart was righteous before God. Some of y'all, glory to God, know what I'm talking about. You done messed up. And right after you mess up, you come right to church. And pray God don't kill you before you get here. Come on now, anybody know what I'm talking about? Glory to God. We pray. We see, and she, she, see, hallelujah. I, I want to get into my message, but I, I'm trying to free you. I want everybody in here free. Glory to God. You know what's really sad? What's sad too, baby? Hallelujah. It's when some folks that, that don't forgive have done the same thing. That the people that they won't forgive. It just wasn't broadcast. Y'all don't want me to start pointing no fingers. You don't want me to start saying, well, what about you? And what about you? And what about you? And what about you? And what about you? <laughs> y'all don't want me to point no fingers now. Because y'all know I know about everybody in here. I know some of everything. I know all that stuff that was done in the dark. Glory to God that I counsel in the light. Come on, I know all that stuff God forgave that nobody knew about but me, you, and him. And what did God say? God say, amen, so be it. If your heart right, baby, let's run. Let's run with God. All I'm looking for is your, is your heart right. Bishop, can you bear witness? Yes. Can you bear witness? Yes. Yes. Huh? All I said was, is your heart right now? Yes, yes. That's right. Huh? Huh? Yes. See, you don't even know what you're looking at sometimes. Yes. You just think you know. Yes. Come on. That's true. You just think you know. Yes. You ain't God. You don't know everything. You don't know everything about people. Yes. All you know is what God lets you see. Yes. Come on, somebody. The people you think, glory to God, you done put up on pedestals and, and hung them on crosses. Glory to God, God had them in hell. Till he came down there and, amen, to their repentance, caused them to come down and get them out. Yes. Y'all hearing me? Yes. I want you free. Yes. Don't be looking around in here. Get free. Yes. Don't be, you know, the scriptures say wagging the head. Yes. You wagging your head. Don't wag your head. I wagging the head. And we ain't none of us in those condition to wag no head. I know I'm not. I can't wag my head. I done messed up too many times to wag my head. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. Sin is sin with God. Don't care what kind it is. Y'all hearing some people just mean. They, they're going to be sitting in the mean corner of hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you got a mean corner. You go over there. Got special tormentors for you. 
and the fornicator going to be in the fornicator's corner. But the thing about it is both of them in hell. Some liars going to be in their corner. Mm-hmm. Some unforgivers are going to be in their corner. A lot of unforgiveness. Some judgmentalism going to be in their corner. Huh? That's why it's crucial that we understand this word. Because when we pick up this word, there won't be any room for any of that stuff in us. Won't be any room for it. Amen? I want you free in here. Amen. I want you free. Glory to God. I want you free. I want us happy. I want us to be able to praise God. I want us to be able to shout and jump and run and... And be glad for the word God has given us. You know, you know, you know one thing that the father said to the prodigal son, brother. He said, this is your brother that was lost. Why, why, why are you upset because he found now? Huh? Why are you upset about the route God took him? Hmm? Why are you upset that... I had to let him go and do his thing as long as he was able to do it. Huh? Until he came to himself. Now, why are you upset that he come to himself? Why are you upset? Huh? Huh? That's what God is saying. God is saying, be free in here. He's saying, be free. Glory to God. Set yourself free. Glory to God. I'm free because I let God love through me. I allow him to love. Glory to God. Because who am I? I ask myself, who am I? What am I? Huh? You cut me, I bleed just like you. Huh? I might be holy today and the temptation come tomorrow that I fall to. I want to know that if I fall, somebody here going to help pick me up. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I want to know you're not going to kick me to the curb. If I repent, you'll come and you'll get me. If my heart is righteous, you'll come and you'll get me. And you'll say, come on, doc. Get up and finish your course. Come on, somebody. Get up and finish your course. Hallelujah. I've said that to a many a preacher. Get on up now. In this ministry and out the ministry. I tell them, get up, baby. Wash yourself off. And finish your course. That's what pleases God. Get on up and finish your course. And if they haven't repented, I say, you're going to stay down there until you repent. God ain't going to even let you up till you repent. Uh, righteousness is righteousness. And don't have no respect of persons. Come on, clap your hands and tell him thank you. Uh, Y'all look so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ready for the word now? Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. You all right, Bishop? Amen. Praise the Lord. The season of testing in a leader's life reveals the disloyalty in the people. Hallelujah. Glory to God, Johnny. May you reach back and got a, a diamond out of there. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. I want us to go into chapter 2 again. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. I want to go back to, uh, let's see. Let's go to page eight. You got it right? Okay. Let's go to page eight. And let's read. Number five, 
He rose the third day to become the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. That's Colossians 1 and 18. Mm -hmm. Consider the facts. If Christ has the preeminence in all things pertaining to salvation, Mm -hmm. and if he is the firstborn from the dead, then there must be others who follow him in this operation. Uh Uh-oh. Watch this. Praise you, Jesus. Watch this now. This is something that we don't really hear ministered a lot. We don't hear this ministered a lot when, when preachers are talking about salvation. We, I, 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 don't, I don't hardly hear this. This, this word says uh, that Christ was the firstborn from the dead. Is that right? He was the firstborn. Now, I've never heard of the term or the terminology firstborn without there being a second or a third or something following that. Amen? Glory to God. There's always, if there's a firstborn, there's a second. There's a third. At least a second. Amen? Because there would be no need for the word first. Hmm? If there wasn't something following it. But I want us to connect the dots here. Bishop Coco, he said that Christ might have the preeminence. Now that word preeminence, Bishop, signifies first. Mm -hmm. First. He would have the preeminence in all things. He rose the third day to become the firstborn from the dead. So that means that somebody else rose from the dead. Hmm? He wasn't the only one that rose from the dead. Someone else rose from the dead. Are are you hearing God? All right. And that he would have, so that he might have the preeminence, that he would be first in all things pertaining to salvation. Now, if we look hard enough in scripture, we can find, hallelujah, and I'm going to let you, you, you scholars find it for me. I think it's in St. Matthew. I don't have my Bible. It's in my office, I believe. Um, But when Christ rose from the dead, some other people rose with him. Is that right? And the Bible says, I believe it's St. Matthew, 20-something chapter, that the saints, the dead saints, the scripture said the graves were open. Find that scripture for me. Say the graves were open. Matthew what? 27 and 52. Somebody want to read that? Star, you got a mic right there in front of you. If you've got it, whoever got it. Amen. You got it? Okay. Yes, ma'am. And the tombs were opened, Mm -hmm. and many bodies of the saints that had fallen asleep were raised. Okay. And did what? And coming forth out of the tombs after his resurrection. Okay. Watch this now. That's St. That's Matthew 27 and what? 52. After his resurrection, the graves were open. And many saints came up. Did it say anything about their bodies? What did it say? Many what? Bodies of, Bodies of the saints did what? Rose. Rose. Graves were open and many bodies of the saints rose. Oh, wow. And came out of the tomb that they were in. Are y'all hearing God? 
See, I want you to see this preeminence here. Now, what does preeminence really mean? It means the first to do, or first to go, or first to be. First to... Now, I want you to see this. I want you to understand it. What preeminence means to us as saints is that whatever it took for us to be born again, Jesus did it first. That's what it means. It means whatever it took for us to be born again, Jesus did it first. Whatever it took for us to be born again, Jesus did it first. What do I start looking at? I start looking at the resurrection. That's where the faith was being established right there. Now, he's already lived the life, right? So that that too was the beginning. Amen. He lived the life. So he's already lived holy and blameless and sinless for 33 years. Amen. He's already lived for 33 and a half years sinless and blameless before God and man. So now he dies. He dies the death of a sinner. That made him like us. Hello. He took on sin. Is that right? Now we start looking from there. That body was lying in the tomb, had taken on sin, and sin is the separator from God. There were some other people that had died before Christ came. Huh? They had died in the faith. In other words, died believing in the promise. Is, is that right? But they, they too, their bodies, they died with their bodies sinful. Because their bodies had the sinful nature of Adam. Are, are y'all hearing God? And sin always separates. And so that thing, that thing that was needed to reconcile them to God, to make them Perfect according to Hebrews 11 and 39. That thing that was taken to make them perfect had not yet come. Jesus had to come to make those old patriots perfect. Doesn't matter if it was uh, uh, Gideon and Samson and Moses and all those guys that were that went on ahead of Christ. Amen. Christ had to come and go in the grave and come out of the grave before they could get out. They could not come into the presence of God until they were made perfect. Are you, are you hearing God? Are, are you hearing him? Amen. Now, the Bible tells us something else. I want to. You know, just jot these down and then you draw a line to them and connect these dots later. The Bible tells us that flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God. Then it, it says that? It says flesh and blood don't inherit the kingdom. So these old patriarchs, the scripture said they rose after his resurrection. So that tells us that they rose in a new body. Had to. They had to rise in a new body because flesh and blood don't inherit the kingdom. So they had to rise in a spiritual body. But that also tells me something else. It tells me that we're going to, whatever body we're in, we're going to recognize one another. Come on. Because the scripture said not only did they rise from the dead, but they also showed themselves to many in Jerusalem. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are y'all working with me? Yeah. So they were walking around town in their new bodies, showing themselves to their loved ones and 
whatnot. People saw him like, ooh, he been dead 50 years. Really, God. But ain't that so and so, so and so? Hmm? Are you hearing God? And I know that that they went on up with Christ because the scripture says, now we have a great cloud of witnesses. Come on, are y'all following me here? We got this cloud of witnesses. What are they witnessing? The resurrection of Jesus. Now they can tell you, honey, it's real. Job, Job's can tell you now. I told you my Redeemer lived. I told you he lived. Glory to God. And in the last day, he's going to stand on the earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the resurrection now. Christ rises first. Then they rise. Now this is what I want you to see and connect these dots that theologians refuse to connect here. If the saints that died before couldn't get to God, they couldn't, you know, they, would, they died and they were not revived until Jesus. Their, their bodies were not revived until Jesus came. Don't for one moment think that we don't have to go through the same process. Okay? We have to experience the exact same thing that Jesus experienced, that the old patriarchs experienced in our salvation. Y'all hear God? You see, the difference in them and us is that they lived and died before he came. With us... He has, he has lived and died before we came. <laughs> come, come on. Are y'all hearing God? Yeah. So now, just as the faith of the operation of God did not impede them because they had died in the promise, hmm? it didn't stop the operation of God, neither will it stop the operation of God in that we are still alive. Are y'all hearing? So a sinner that's still alive now, a sinner, a sinner that's still alive, he's got to, to be saved, he's got to go through the same thing that Jesus went through. He's got to be a partaker of Christ's death. He's got to be a partaker of Christ's resurrection. Are you hearing God? He's got to be a partaker of Christ's life. In order to be saved. So, what are you saying, Dr. Banks? I'm saying in this scripture that Apostle read in uh, number two, it says, you, you, read that, knowing this. It's on the page uh, seven, I believe. It's in, in paragraph two down there, section two. Testing. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, Uh oh. that the body of sin might be destroyed. Okay, I want you to take it step by step. Knowing this, that our old man, did we learn who the old man was? That was us before salvation. That was our body before salvation. That was our body before salvation. Are you working with me? Our body was crucified with him. Now, this is what God does. See, God is the author of this operation of faith. He's the author of it. So God, just like God took that lamb or that ram back in the old covenant, had them to kill that thing and put it on the altar and then made Israel one with that, that blood. Amen. Now, God is saying, I am able to take and put Jesus on the cross and make your body one with his. How did he do that? He tells us how he did it. He tells us over here on page 9. This verse is very powerful. 
at the top of page nine, read that, Mike. Beloved, this is the Christian faith. This is it. Understand this. This is the Christian faith that needs to be taught to the entire body of Christ. For to this end, Mm -hmm. Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. All right. (laughs) Are y'all hearing God? He both, he both died. Notice what he said. To this end, Christ both. How many is both? What does both mean? Both. Two. Mm-hmm. And then what follows both? What follows both? Revive. He both died and rose. rose. Died and rose. Died and rose. Died and rose. And and revive. Now, if he has the preeminence, that means we must both die and rise and be revived. Now, when our bodies are revived, how are they revived? You learned this last night. How was our fleshy body revived? And uh, first of all, what killed it? We have to, we we had to die, didn't we? First of all, we were already dead in sin and trespass. But now we had to die a physical death as well. Jesus died a physical death. Now, if he has the preeminence, if he died a physical death, we have to die a physical death. I'm talking about stop. Let us stop now. Over. Let's let us let us stop over reading, skipping over things in the scriptures that mean so much to the salvation plan that we have not heard before. Amen. Hello. Glory to God. So in salvation, if if Jesus is the is the firstborn so that he could have preeminence. That means that if he died, we have to die. If he rose, we have to rise. If he had to be revived, if his body had to be revived, then our body had to be what? Revived. So how did we die? He died a physical death. Did we die a physical death? I can't hear you. See, the devil don't want you to agree with that. Did did we die a physical death? Let me show you something about that. Remember Romans 7? This is why we had to die that physical death. Look in Romans the 7th chapter. Just to, to, to get this on tape. 7 and... um. Um, let's, let's read the first verse, verse one through three, one, one to three. Or are ye ignorant, brethren? Uh, no, ye not, brother. Something happened. I'm on the, I'm on the wrong version. Amen. That ASV version. (laughs) Know ye not, brethren, Mm -hmm. for I speak to them that know the law. Okay. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Okay. Now, this law is God's law. Okay. God's law says that the soul that sinneth must what? Die. Die. That's God's law. And that law has dominion over you as long as you are alive. Are you hearing God? As long as you're alive and you're a sinner, then that law has dominion over you. You got to die in order to satisfy the law. Are are you hearing God? Now notice what he says here. Read on. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. Okay, so he's using now the Jewish law of marriage. We've gone through this many times. The Jewish law of marriage to to explain salvation. And notice what I said, the Jewish law of marriage. Right, right, yeah. D- this is different, somewhat different from the church. Teaching of marriage to the church is a little bit different. 
Are you working with me? Amen. Some of the same principles, but there was some other stuff added to the church. All right. The law got dominion over a woman. The woman that is married to her husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if the husband be dead. But now if her husband dead. Mm-hmm. She is loose from the law of her husband. She free. Ooh-wee. She free. She's loose from the law because he's dead. He doesn't have any more dominion over her. The law doesn't hold her in bondage if the man dead. Are you working with me? Read the third verse. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man. Now, if she married to her husband and, and she just decide, I, I don't like him no more. I like this man over here. And she, and she just leave him, just walk away from him. Don't have no reason. Just She just wants somebody else. Glory to God. Just I just saw something else I like. And, and so I'm leaving you for him. So now when she does that, and her husband is still alive, what does it say about that? She shall be called an adulteress. She's an adulteress. Because she got a living husband that she just decided she didn't want anymore. <laughs> oh Lord. Let's hurry up with this answer. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Read Bishop. Read Bishop Mike. Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike. But Read if her <laughs> <laughs> But if her husband be dead, uh-huh. she is free from that law. Mm-hmm. So that she is no adulteress. Okay. Though she be married to another man. Even if she marries someone else, if her husband is dead, she still satisfied the law. Right? If he died and she marries someone else, it's okay. It's cool. Read this fourth verse. Now, this is Paul trying to show us salvation. And let me tell you something now. Because for, for, I know y'all. Amen. Somebody sitting there looking for a way out. So, um <laughs> So that joker won't die. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Oh, I got good discerning. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. But, uh, but <laughs> I want to just warn you, this is a teaching of the Jewish law of marriage. There are some other circumstances that, are, that men or women can be married to to someone else without death having occurred. But that's another teaching. Amen. We didn't come here to teach this kind of marriage. Amen. We're talking about marriage of the church now. Let's go to the fourth verse. Wherefore, my brethren, Mm -hmm. ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Uh Uh-oh. That ye should be married to another, Mm -hmm. even to him who has, who is raised from the dead. Mm Mm-hmm. That we should bring forth fruit unto God. Okay, now. You have become what? Dead. Dead to the Dead law. Dead to the law. By what? The body of Christ. Wait a minute now. We dead to the law because of the body of Christ. Who is the body of Christ? Hello? Who? We are the body of Christ? How you know? Galatians 5 and 30. Uh Uh-huh. Go to Galatians 5 and 30. Let's see what it said. Because I don't want you telling me that stuff if you don't know it. You can't prove it. You telling me you the body of Christ? Prove it. Thirty. There's no thirty. No <laughs> Ephesians. I'm sorry. Ephesians. Ephesians five and thirty. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Doctor. 
Don't laugh at my mama. <laughs> say what? I say, don't laugh at my mama. That's right. For we are members. For we are what? Members of his body. Members. What is a member? A body part. A body part. Who? Appendages? Okay, a body part. <laughs> See, her family own funeral homes. So, so, so to them, they are appendages. Praise <laughs> Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. But when we leave Groff Funeral Service, amen, they become body parts, you see. So, in, 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 in Corinthians, uh, it tells us that one may be the eye, one may be the foot. Huh? I can't say to the foot, you don't need. But each one of us is a is a member of the body of who? Christ. Read that. For we are members of his body. Mm -hmm. His, his, somebody say his body. His body. I am a member of his body. Yeah, Lord. I may, glory to God, I may just be the toe, but I'm a member. Glory to God, I may be the ear, but I'm a member of his body. Yeah, Lord. Because the scripture says in, in, in Corinthians 12, it says God set the members in the body as it pleased him. Yeah, so it's God that determined whether you the foot, the ankle, the toe, the finger, the eye, the ear. Hello, somebody. It's God is the one that decided what part we are. So we are members of his body. Read on. Of his flesh. Of, we are members of. Of his, of his flesh. Of his flesh. Mm -hmm. His flesh. And of his bones. And of his what? Bones. His bones. So you're really saying to me that when I look at my hand, this is his flesh? Is that what they're saying, Bishop McGurk? Is that what they're saying? Pastor Leverage, that this 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 right here is his flesh. That 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 this is his bone. These are his bones. But he sure need to get them operating right. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> he need to keep these bones operating. Amen. <laughs> but this is his flesh. His bones. These are his limbs, his body. So now, we are the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. Is that what it said? Glory to God. So now, if that's the case, how was I revived? Notice what the scripture, the, the scripture before you, which one, what, what did you read just before that? Romans? Seventh chapter? Notice what it says. Go back here. Look at Romans 7 and 4. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, my brethren, mm -hmm. brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Because... You are now the body of Christ. That's what you are. And because you are the body of Christ, you are dead to the law. Because Christ satisfied the law. Now, now you got to see this. Don't, don't, don't jump over here. You got to see this now. Because how did I get to be, how did I get to be delivered, pardoned, from the law. How come sin doesn't have any more dominion over me? How come the law doesn't have any more dominion? The law doesn't have any more dominion. Listen to me. I'm going to explain it in a minute. The law doesn't have any more dominion over us as 
members of Christ because this body was revived by Christ. What does that really mean? It was revived by Christ. That means it had to die like Christ in order to be revived. It also means that in order to be born again, you had to die in order to be born again. Is that not what the scripture said about Jesus? The Bible says in Psalms 2, glory to God, this day I have begotten thee again. Hello? So Christ was born again from the dead. Did not you just read that he was the firstborn from the dead? So now we are now that which follows. We're the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the millions that followed. He was the first to be born again from the dead. So we had to be born again from the dead. And to be born again from the dead means that Jesus Christ has gotten into this body and revived it. And it now becomes his body. Come on, are you all working with me? Now he's going to explain that. He, because, see, theologians want us to have scripture, so we're going to give it to him. Amen? Look at this. He's going to explain it. Keep reading. Right there. That ye should be married to another, mm -hmm. even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Now, he said that it's all right now, just like it was all right for the woman to be married to another man if her husband was dead. If, 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 if some kind of way God can take this body and kill it, huh? And preserve my soul somewhere. Come on. If he, if, if he, 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 when, when we say, save me, God, please save me. We're not crying out for him to save the flesh. We say, save my soul, Lord. Just save my soul. So he's saying, now when you cry out for salvation of the soul, if, if there is there, some kind of way God can preserve the soul while he deal with the flesh. Come on. Come on. Huh? So he said, now if you agree with Jesus, if you believe on Jesus and you ask God to save you, he'll take your soul out of your flesh and put it in Christ. Come on, somebody. He'll put it in Christ. And once he puts it in Christ, it's preserved. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's preserved. Where's my portraits? Come, 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 brothers, come on, quickly, run on down here, y'all. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Titus. Amen, come on, come on. Come on, yes, these two and this one here. Praise the Lord. Let me show you something here. Glory to God. Amen. Now, now watch this here. Come on, Jesus. Come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got on red and white. That's right. Yeah. Glory to God. Now he's going to cry out. This is the soul that's crying out right behind him. This is the soul. This is the flesh right here. Huh? The flesh has done everything it's big enough to do. But the soul crying for salvation. The soul says, save me. Because I already know this going to the dirt. I know this not going to last no how. But I, I got sense enough to know that this going to live forever somewhere. So just save me. Save me. Glory to God. Save me. So God said, okay. All right. You really want to be saved? I'm not going to save you until you want me more than you want anything in this world. Including your own life. Come on and shout glory somebody. Well, when you get to the place where you want me more than you want this world, I'll save you. Glory to God. And how am I going to save you? God said, I got an operation. Just like I took that, 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 that ram and that bull and that goat and put him on the altar and took his blood and sprinkled on the people and accounted them for righteousness. I got a, I got a better operation for you. I, glory to God. Amen. That was a promise, but I got a better promise. Come on, somebody. I got a better operation. Uh, you want me to save your soul? Okay, I'm going to save your soul. But in order to save your soul, I got to get it out of the flesh. Come on, somebody. I got to get it out of the flesh. Why do I have to get it out of the flesh? Read the fifth verse. 
For when we were in the flesh, when we were in the flesh, because when you you served, Mr. Soul was living in the flesh. Uh huh. The motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members. The motions of sin worked in my members, my body parts, his body parts. Look at here. He was sinning. He was using this body to sin, right? So God is saying, this is the operation of faith. I'm going to take, I, in order to save you, I got to get you out of this. Because this has, the, glory to God, this is what you used. You used this to sin against me. And I'm going to, I need to, the soul that sinners must die. So I'm going to take you out. But because you said save you, you believe in me, guess what? I'm going to hide you. I'm going to hide you in me. So in me you live. You glory to God. And you going to die. Now in me, in Christ, you can live. Because I am Christ, Christ testimony. I am the life. I'm the life. You want to live? You got to live in me. There's no life outside of me. If you're going to survive, you got to be in me. If you're going to, amen, have peace with God, you got to get in me. If you want to get to God, you got to get in me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come on, somebody. And I'm going to take you out of that flesh, and I'm going to put you in me. And so now, in me, in Jesus, you live, and you move. And have your being. You in here now. Y'all getting this? You in here. You're preserved. Your life is hid in me. Huh? Now, this no longer belongs to you. Notice what you just read. You are dead because of the body of Christ. Remember? Isn't that what you just read? We are dead to sin because of the body of Christ. When we were in sin, in the flesh, when you, sir, were in the flesh, the motions of sin, emotions and desires of sin worked in your members. But now it's dead. Now notice what he said. When this die, it has no more dominion over you. It cannot lead you into sin. See, because there was a spirit working with this. The spirit of Satan was working with this. He was the daddy in here. And he led you into sin. He created even more lust after Adam fell. Satan created lust. And Jesus said, it's his lust we were doing. Is that right? Because he controlled this. But he got evicted. God evicted the devil. And he said to you, Mr. Soul, you don't own this anymore. However, you can be married to another. Isn't that what it says? So, so, Mike, you live in Lady Lake. You have a wife. Her name is Michigan Thomas. Amen? The two of you are the masters of the house. So if, if you leave the house, who's in charge? She's in charge. And why is she in charge? Mike says she in charge when I'm there. <laughs> you go, Michigan. <laughs> and basically what he's saying is, I let her run the house. She the lady of the house. She runs the house. If she get to a place where, where she can't figure out something or need his help, then she go to her husband and say, help me. Is that right? So that makes her the steward. She's a steward, right? She's a steward over that house. Huh? Are y'all hearing God? He might have had the house before he married her. House might be in his name. But once he married her, 
he made her a steward of the house. Are y'all, y'all, y'all hearing God? He made her the steward so she can decide, I don't want that furniture over there. I want to get this out and put some new in. Come on. Yeah, they do that, don't they? <laughs> Pastor Beth said, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I know what you've been doing, Helen. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they, that steward will go in there and renovate things. That steward has the ability to run that house. Is that right? But that steward is supposed to run that house according to the will of the master. That wife is not supposed to do that thing that she knows is going to anger the husband. Or something the husband is not going to agree with. Is that right? Glory to God. So, so, you now are just like that wife. That is, amen. Glory to God. Been made a steward. How so? Because this body is dead. It does. It belongs to him. But he's going to make you a steward. Because, let me show you why it belongs to him. Because in order for this body to be revived, you can't do it. You can't do it. You need him to revive this flesh. Are y'all hearing God? But I need you to understand something, soul. He's reviving it for his own use. Not for yours. He's reviving it for his use. So now when he comes and revives it, this flesh, he steps in it. He gives it a new nature. It once had a sinful nature. But because he is in it now, it is the body of Christ. Is that right? With the nature of Christ. So now we have been delivered from the dominion of the law. Because Christ has satisfied the law. And now when the devil says, why is he alive? He's a sinner. No, 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 he's not. He's alive by Christ. And so now the soul is over here saying, when someone questions why is he alive? Why is he talking about he going to heaven? He don't have no right to go to heaven. He's sin. I know he's sin because I used to go to bar with him. Glory to God. I know he's sin. And the soul is saying, the life that I live in the flesh, it is not I. You just think it's me. It's not I that's got the flesh alive. But it's Christ that's living through me. That's what you're watching. You see in Christ, Christ is the one that's got this body alive to live and to do and to, amen, to my being is hidden in him. He's still hid in Christ, but this is Christ's body. That's the faith of the operation of God. Come on, somebody. Now, God is saying to this, God is saying this. He's saying, now, what is faith to you? That's the operation of God right there. That's the faith of the operation of God. And so what is faith to you? To you, faith is, Mr. Soul, never disagreeing with God, with Jesus. Always doing those things that please the Father. Faith is the soul never doing this. Saying, I'm going to use this, but it's my body. And I'm going to do what I want to do with it. That's not faith. That's disobedience and rebellion. That's a rebellion. Faith says, in him I live. And I move by him. And I have my being in him. Faith says, he is the one that lives and moves in me. He is the one that makes the decisions. That's what faith says. Faith says, I will always obey his will. Do y'all get that? Do you understand this? Then clap your hands and tell him thank you. Come on, we can do better than that.
Anybody got a ditto? Bishop Michelle? Any of you bishops got a ditto here? Pastor Bess, you got a ditto? <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor Leverage, you got a ditto here? <laughs> Star? Hebrews 5 and 9. Mike, would you read that? Oh. Hey. That's what I just preached. Praise the Lord. That's verification. Read that for us, Mike. And being made perfect. Wait, we start at the eighth verse. At the eighth? Mm hmm. Though he were a son. Who is he talking about? Christ. Christ Jesus. Yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Mm hmm. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. All right. He became the author of eternal salvation. That's our faith. The author of the faith for all of them that do what? Obey him. Faith is not something you psych yourself up to believe. Not for the sons. Faith is obedience to the Holy Ghost. Just obey the Holy Ghost. You know, why, why do I have to psych myself up? Because God said he would lead and guide me. I just got to obey. Huh? I don't, I, don't, he, I don't even have to worry about what I think. Because he even tell me what not to think. Told me to think on those things that are lovely and pure and got a good report and all that. He told me how to think. Told me to cast down every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. He instructs me in all things. All I got to do is obey. I get in trouble when I don't obey. Faith operates when I obey. Amen? Any other questions? Any comments? All right, then let's praise him again. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. We're going we're gonna to worship God in our giving. Praise the Lord. We take this, this here, this one. Amen. Oh, no, 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 no. Wow. <laughs> just took it up. Praise you, Jesus. I'm sorry. Oh, those of you that are watching by way of <laughs> BTBN, hallelujah, we have had a good time today. Amen. Glory to God. I said we've had a good time today. And we've learned some things. We've learned some things. God has been gracious to us. Amen. We've learned some things. And if you would like to be a partaker of this part of the service, just click on donations. Always bring God an offering when God brings you his word. If you got an offering, bring it to the Lord. Bring it to the Lord. Amen. And watch God work in your families and on your job and in your own personage. He'll work for you. So we're saying to those of you that are online, amen, click on donations Give your offering. Amen. And God will give you a return. Praise the Lord. We have enjoyed bringing this broadcast to you. And it's time to say goodbye. Until this evening, we will be back here again tonight at what time? 7 o'clock. We're back here at 7 o'clock tonight, and we're not going to stand around 
greeting one another. Get your greet on now. Amen. When we come back, we're going to come back ready for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Isn't that right? Amen. So those of you that are online, we will be back tonight at 7 o'clock. Amen. I want everybody, get in your seats. Come in at 6.30. Get in your seats. Now, I guess you've noticed that if you're late getting here, you don't get one of the big seats. For saying, we'll see you next time. Praise the Lord. I want you to worship God in your giving tonight, today. Amen. Raise your hand if you need a love offering envelope. You want to give a special envelope, a special gift. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Yes. Are we okay? Are we still online? Are we on BTBN? I mean, on BT, BTI. Okay.